Three, two. Mr. Drake Batherson, we're going, sir. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you guys doing? I'm, I'm doing well. We're not as well as you. Career high. <laughs> Holy smokes, what a year. You must be, I was saying in the intro, this must be one of the most enjoyable times in your life right now. Yeah, no, it's pretty cool. Obviously, we're at the point now as a team, we want to want to make the playoffs, and we were close this year, but you know, personally, it was uh, yeah, a pretty decent year and had, had tons of fun, and it's good to be home for the summer. Is it like when you come home, I know you're always in training mode, you, you want to work, but is there a part of you that needs to be, you know, Drake, you got to enjoy your summers. You, you worked hard all year. Let, let's sit back for a minute. Yeah, absolutely. I always take three three weeks to a month off uh, once the season ends and got a couple trips in this year. Usually I just come home and hibernate in the valley, but uh, kind of explored a bit this year. And uh, yeah, this is already my sixth or seventh week training. So I've been going good for a while and, uh, you know, which is good, I think. There's a rumor mill at the, the Good Life down on Joe Howe that you just got back from a golf trip. Yeah. Where, where'd you Where'd you go? Who'd you yeah. go with? Uh, so I've already been on three, believe it or not. <laughs> but uh, so eight of uh, eight of us from Ottawa went to Nashville at the end of the year for four days. Uh, no fun at all there on, on Broadway, <laughs> but that no, was great. We played 36 every day and obviously went on Broadway every night. So it was it was a really fun way to to unwind. And then uh, yeah, went over to Ireland with uh, a few buddies and. And then PEI. So, yeah, no, it was great, great so far, and still lots of summer left. That's great. Are you, yeah. are you type of guy that lets weather uh, kill your mute, kill your mood, or you're no, good to go? Not at all. We went to PEI. It was like eight degrees, pouring rain, and we're just having a time out there. Just got to make the most of it, you know. That's great. <laughs> yeah. No, you have to. I'm. Yeah. Yeah, I wish I had your skill. I'm yeah. in the dumps right now. I need. I need the sun. Oh, I know. Yeah, we haven't seen the sun here for a few weeks, but. Hopefully she's coming. Do you find uh, somehow, I know, you know, if you're a professional athlete, you have to find fun in training. How do you find the fun in training? You said you're with uh, Alexi Pianozzi at the forum? Yeah, that's right. Uh, I split time between him and uh, Andy O'Brien, um, so who some of you guys may know. But, yeah, no, I, I just have fun, I think, just looking in the future when I'm training. When I'm, you know, you go in on a Monday at 7.30 or pretty groggy and tired from the weekend but you know i look ahead to you know where where our team wants to be this year and we want to be a winning team and make playoffs so that's my my motivation every day i know i keep going back to the yeah. personal accomplishments but you must have felt good about a groove that you were in you you, you put up some pretty incredible numbers i was saying 62 points <clears throat> in any league no matter the nhl or playing junior b 62 is a high number yeah. how, how did it feel getting into that groove yeah no it was good obviously got to play with some good players all season long uh, played a full year this year, every game 82, which which was nice last year. Obviously, had the big injury to the ankle, and you know last season was uh, it was, it was going even better than the season I had this year. So would have been interesting to see how things panned out last year, but uh, no, it was a good year. And you know, like I said, just we want to play in playoffs. You know, was, we've uh, you know missed it I think seven years now, and I I played five years of pro and yet to play a game in the playoffs. So. Really? You know, I'm hungry. You know, we all watch it in the playoffs. It looks like a ton of fun. So I'm looking forward to it one day. You guys are a fun team to watch. Yeah. Like you guys are a young, <clears throat> energetic group that never quits. I guess that's a great way to describe you from, from watching on TV. You guys just look like you're having fun. I know you fell short, but it looks like a fun dressing room. Yeah. That's kind of the environment, uh, you know, DJ's built, uh, DJ and Pierre built in Ottawa. Just, uh, you know, a fun, energetic team with, uh, you know, a never give up attitude. And, uh, you know, he's preached that since day one. And even if we're losing five, nothing, you know, in the third period, we're still, still going out, finishing our checks and playing hard right to the final buzzer. And, you know, I think the fans in Ottawa appreciate that. And, you know, we just want to, want to bring a few more wins, uh, next year. What, what's, what's Brady to Chuck like as a leader? Is he just <laughs> seems like, I don't want to say goofball, but he yeah. just seems like, I don't know. What's he like as a leader? No, he's the is best. He, is he? He's the best, man. Yeah, like obviously an absolute horse on the ice. Um, Great word. Un, unreal player. And then off the ice, he can be the goofball or he can, you know, speak up in the dressing room after a period and be serious. He's just kind of kind of got everything going for him and gets along with everyone and treats everyone unbelievable. So he's a he's a great captain. And, uh, you know, me and him have played pretty well every year together pro. So I, I've known him pretty well. And going to his wedding in a few weeks too so that'll be fun did you what happened when he he had a couple pops and he was yelling at the fans saying you guys are gonna <laughs> win a cup did you yeah. text them after that yeah we were actually all out there oh you were there yeah so that was like our, we had a team party downtown and it was like 25 degrees out and uh you know obviously had a had a few chilly ones into us and uh 
Yeah, he's he he wants to win more than anyone. So him saying that he's gonna he's gonna come through with it. I love it. Yeah. What did uh, Claude Giroux bring to the dressing room? Obviously, I know what he brought on the ice. He had a tremendous year, but what did he bring to the room? Because you know, he's a vet. Yeah. No, I di- I didn't really know him uh, personally at all before he came, but he's a guy I grew up watching. It was it was him and Sid. I remember growing up in my younger days. My dad would bring me down to the basement. We throw in the games, and he'd always tell me to watch Giroux. So Giroux was. You know, one of my favorite players growing up, and uh, you know, I come into the dressing room first day of camp and wondering where my stall is. And uh, one of our trainers, Ian Cox, he's from Fall River, yeah, so I know. he trained me, or he's with the Mooseheads when I was there. Yeah, yeah, he treats me, he's treated me very well along with all the other trainers, and threw me right next to him. So, got, <laughs> I'm sitting right next to one of my favorite players growing up, and unbelievable guy, pretty quiet guy, but uh, just leads by example, and one of the most competitive guys I've I've met. And this year he had a career high in goals, so not slowing down <laughs> yeah that's it's, it's true we had a great yeah. year like yeah. the whole your whole top uh five guys just even tim to like oh man yeah just an incredible group of uh of guys you guys zipped it around on the power play it reminded me of like the the early days of pittsburgh penguins just zipping it yeah. you guys had a great great year yeah no it's cool like our power play um we lost norris at the start of the year to shoulder surgery but our power play has been together for three or four seasons now so we know we're pretty familiar with each other out there and looking to get right back on it uh, next season. I think we were top five all year, so it did, was good. Correct me if I'm wrong, but did you guys <laughs> not lose in overtime this year? Uh, no, I don't I don't think. Maybe a shootout or two, but no, not in overtime. We were, we were pretty good. 39, 35, 0, and 8. But 0 means yeah, that's no right. losses in overtime. Correct, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'm not a big big numbers guy. I just go by the wins and losses, but that makes sense. That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. No, we'll take overtime's that. fun. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> uh, the fans love it. I mean, I wish it was ten minutes even. Oh yeah, yeah. I've seen those polls going around and people want ten minutes. I think it's awesome. Why not? Well, it's just it's nonstop action. Absolutely. Like you're sitting yeah. at home and you got to piss. Like you're not leaving. You're sitting because something could happen right away. It's just oh, like nonstop. Man. Yeah, it's the best when it gets going back and forth, two on one each way, and a breakaway here and there. It's it's unreal, even watch from the bench. Yeah, yeah, and I like how there's no uh, like one team is leaving with two points, like ties. It's just no no good. One team is leaving with with two. I like that about it as well. Yeah, I agree. Like in college, they end with a tie. I think it's I think it's criminal. Like just you got to get a win for sure. Hundred percent. Yeah. Um, did you meet Ryan Reynolds this year? No, he was at a few games though up in the box, but we were waiting for him to come down after. But uh, <laughs> no, it was pretty cool. Like when he came to the games, the fans were going absolutely insane um yeah the sale process was crazy i didn't know who was going to buy the team but you know the new owner we got now i'm i'm super excited for that and uh heard nothing but great things so i'm excited to meet him and uh, i'm sure he's, he's going to do a, con- a ton of good stuff for us me and jeff were just saying we're not we don't want to wish the summer away we're having a great time we're, we're sucking at golf whatever but we're also <laughs> really excited to get back to work we love what we do we love live streaming we love traveling we love you know doing everything that runs this business is there a part of you that if you could wake up tomorrow you wish the season would start like are you hungry to get going again yeah no maybe maybe a couple more weekends with, okay, with my yeah, buddies yeah. but uh no i'm i'm excited you know every day we're training we're training and skating lots so you know the itch is back i usually start skating once i once i want to start skating again and i get that itch back i don't go on because i have to i wait until you know i want to go on and yeah, I'm excited every day going in there to go on right now and looking forward to training camp. And We're talking all the time as a team, uh, you know, looking forward to the season and, you know, everyone's excited and the whole fan base is too. So it's uh, exciting times in Ottawa and just got to come through, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> How early did you start planning this exhibition game? Yeah, so it's it's pretty cool. My, uh, my assistant GM... Um, uh, Ryan Bonus came up to me before friend of the, the show yeah great guy um, came up to me before the season he goes we might get a game in Halifax I, I go dude you can't be pulling my leg like that like this is good. that'll be unreal if it happens and sure enough he's like yeah we got one in Sydney and Halifax so so we're playing the the day before in Sydney at five o'clock and uh, you know get in that night and then we'll play in Halifax the next day so two destinations for me that are perfect my whole family's from Cape Red and played junior there Probably. I already have, I think, a box and 25 tickets oh, for, for, oh, the for, wallet. for each game. And, uh, you know, Brady even told me in Halifax, like, you got to go out, take the ceremonial puck drop against Sid. And 
the open draw. So hopefully I can snap her back, but he's pretty good. So we'll see. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah. 25, man, the wallet took a hit and a box. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, the wallet can take the hit. It's probably a once in a lifetime that we ever come back. So I know everywhere I go, everyone's talking about it. So it's going to, it's going to be unreal. I can't wait. That- I wish. The building had like 50,000. I think it would sell out for that game. There'll be some people sneaking in. I know it only holds like 11,000, maybe 10, but there could easily be 12 in there. Yeah. Someone said, so we comment, we posted it on Facebook, and someone goes, well, what if Sid like doesn't play? And I was like, that's just like ACDC performing and them not performing, you know, highway to hell. Like it's just, it just won't happen. It's just, he will play. Oh yeah. He'll be playing for sure. Yeah. Do you know if he had anything to do with the game as well, or did he just find out last second too? Uh, I don't know for he... I don't know for sure, but uh, you know I think for any team to come to a town like Halifax, even for a few days for a team builder before the season is is unreal. Obviously, there's tons to do, tons of great golfing too. So I think for a team to get together and it's at the end of pre- end of preseason, so it'll pretty much be our full teams playing against each other in that game. Wow. Yeah. Did you did you watch the World Juniors at all? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man. Yeah. So much fun to be a part of. Oh, unreal. I wish I could have got home and caught a game, but our schedule's crazy. We only got two days off, so. But, yeah, like, I was talking to Gore Miller a few weeks after the World Juniors, and he's like, man, I've never heard a rank that loud. Like, when Bedard scored that overtime winner, he's like, the dust was just coming off the ceiling right onto my head at the Metro <laughs> Center. <laughs> he said it was He said it was wild. You guys were there, no? For the game? Yeah, we yeah. got uh, – we applied for media passes, couldn't get in because – it's just it's international media so they only let like two or three local companies in so we didn't okay. get accepted but i put the um, like if you buy moosehead season tickets you were automatically guaranteed for the world junior tickets okay so i bought moosehead season tickets and then we just re-upped for the world junior so we had the world junior package which was awesome and there was even some games where we didn't want to go and we sold the tickets and even made some money back. But like oh, yeah. it would be like Germany, Sweden, Tuesday afternoon at two o'clock and it would be pretty much sold out. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Like I think that's awesome. Like for me playing in the World Juniors, I was in Buffalo and like we would be there whatever three hours before the game, there'd be a game going on and it'd be like you could count how many people were in the stands, like fifty, sixty people, you know. But you turn on the game at two o'clock in Halifax and there's eight, nine thousand people in there and fans are just loving it no matter what game so i think that's the cities you gotta go after for the world juniors like especially yeah. halifax we just love 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 hockey down here well that's the thing you're right there's eight nine thousand people in the rink but there's also eight nine thousand people outside the rink at the bars exactly. like the econ i, I don't know I there was a number out there about how much the city made over those uh those three four weeks whatever it was but it, it, it was a couple it was a good amount of millions <laughs> oh, yeah it was awesome say, yeah yeah no that would have been fun to be at the game or at the bar for sure for those games What's the yeah. uh, what's the game plan for the first game against Chicago when you face Bedard? Yeah, no, it's gonna be cool. Uh, I've actually got to skate with him a bit, so you know he's he's the real deal, man. I think he had like what seventy some goals this year in the dub, which is absolutely insane. And Chicago too, like great city, and uh, obviously uh, a team that was was hoping to get him, and you know they landed him. So you know I wish him nothing but the best, and. Yeah, hopefully try to shut him down, and hopefully he doesn't bury against us. But no, hoping uh, nothing but great things for him. It's an interesting time in the NHL. How the, the I don't want to say little man, but the the smaller man can excel. You look at Caulfield in Montreal, Bedard hopefully in Chicago. It's yeah. there's guys that are so strong on their feet that can excel in the NHL. If you look 10, 10 years ago, that's probably not a thing. Yeah, it's it's an interesting time in the NHL and how there's a shift coming. Yeah, there's only a few guys probably ten years ago, maybe like. Marty St. Louis, Tyler Ennis, like, uh, I'm trying to think here, and maybe Nathan Gerby, like, those were the smallest guys. But now it doesn't really matter what size you are. And uh, I think Colorado was the second smallest team in the league the year they won the Cup. So. Oh, really? Yeah. So it's, uh, yeah, obviously it doesn't. I think, si- like, everyone was talking about Vegas' size, like, all their D were huge and stuff. But, you know, Colorado the year before had the second smallest team. So I think, it, you know, once you get in the playoffs, you just got to make it to the dance, man. Anything can happen, I feel like. You're hungry. I could tell. No, oh, like, man. You want to yeah. get there. Yeah, no. I love watching playoff hockey, man, but, uh, you know, our job's to be playing in there, so no, I'm excited. That. Is that the mindset of everyone on the team right now? Just a little pissed off, a little hungry, a little irritated? <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, you look at Florida. Us in Florida were, like, tied with probably 10 games to go, and then, you know, that could have been us playing the Bruins first round easily, so – just had one bad road trip and kind of, kind of killed the playoff hopes. But you know, it easily could have been us, which kind of, you know, 
put some fire in your belly for the summer for sure i love it well you're not going anywhere you're going to be there for a bit you still got some more cracks at it so it's exciting yeah no it's it's great man the guys are excited so it's it's gonna be fun what made tyler ennis a great teammate (laughs) he's just the best guy ever man like i don't know it could be like minus 30 down in ottawa (laughs) and guys are coming in after a back-to-back tired and he's just like cracking jokes like always in the best mood ever it's it's awesome i don't even know he's just contagious to be around you know if the guys are going for beers you want him to be there like he's just you always want him around i already like the keith's like that's his beer the keith's yeah he'd probably drink anything after <laughs> after three or four but uh no he's just uh he's just an awesome teammate still talked to him a ton and uh you know had a great career for a guy being five nine hundred and fifty five hundred sixty 160 pounds yeah 100 percent. i watched the mic'd up video he did with ottawa and everyone just gravitated towards him that's why i wrote him on the sheet i was like oh man everyone loves this guy yeah and i like his instagram stuff so i was like oh this guy is probably an okay guy so that's why i asked you and that was probably like the quietest day he had when he had the mic on i think he was like a little hesitant they should have snuck it in there i think but no it was was fun how did they approach you because you had a great mic'd up video as well you had what you you said you said any you want to say anything back to the folks at home in nova scotia i love love the nova scotia drop (laughs) yeah but how do they approach you for name and a half yeah the nova scotia (laughs) drop brady always talks about the lower deck so he's like how's the lower deck this summer so i was like brady what do you want to say back to the people in nova scotia because he's always talking about it and i got to get him out here so maybe after that cape breton game we'll sneak down for one at the lower deck but uh no, sorry, sorry, what was the question again? I got sidetracked there. How do they pick you for the oh, mic'd the up video? Up. Uh, I don't know. I'm I'm probably one of the most chatter guys out there on the ice. I just love, you know, shooting the shit out there. And he just asked me if I could throw a mic on me and I said, yeah, no problem, man. Like, I'll wear it. And then, <laughs> uh, yeah, it kind of blew up. I was kind of thinking of every hockey term I could think of when I was out there. And, you yeah, know, the, the media loved it. Where did wakey wakey come from? Wakey wake what do you say? Yeah. What? <laughs> it's, it's a newfie wakey wakey old boy. But uh yeah, so Noof's family. We Josh Norris, we call him Noof because his whole family's from Newfoundland. But uh you know, people like in the States and stuff, they don't realize they can call me Noof too, because my whole family's from there too. So <laughs> I feel like anyone down in the East Coast you can call Noof, but no, they call him Noof, and uh, I don't know. He's a little, little spacey some days, and he's my centerman, so I just got to get him going. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. It's the yeah. best, man. Yeah. Oh, you're making me miss hockey. Beer League's yeah. good. Don't get me wrong. I like Beer League. But yeah. traveling's fun, too. Oh, yeah. 100%. Traveling's fun. Yeah. Road game in Calgary. Yeah. It's fun. It's fun, man. Yeah, it's a lot of travel, but I love it, man. You go to a new city, new restaurants. It's awesome. Tell me about the Rolex. Tell me about the purchase. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a funny story. Um, so after my first year pro, I didn't have a watch or whatever, and everyone was wearing a watch. And it's like, oh, I got to get one. So drove down to the Halifax Shopping Center in the Fossil there, grabbed a $90 Fossil. Wore it for my first three years in the league. And then the guys were all over me. Every guy on the team's got a nice watch, right? And whatever brand it is, Rolex, or doesn't matter. And they were all over me for like, not even lying a year and a half and i signed my new deal and i was like ah you know what it's time for time for a nice watch and you know grabbed a rolex so they've been quiet ever since 100 (laughs) percent, you need one that's great (laughs) what you gotta how long were you rocking the fossil for she's like almost four years i think it was yeah still got it still wear it to some games too do you yeah change it up you know if i'm in a slump or something throw the fossil on (laughs) (laughs) go with his money folks i like it no it's it's funny but no it's good yeah do you find yourself a little bit more, um, I don't, can, can, do you find your focus that you don't have to look for a contract? Like I know guys sometimes come in here and they're more concerned about the contract rather than training and getting better. Is it nice just to be like, Whoa, I can breathe Drake. You can work on your game, work on yourself. Is That must be a nice feeling. Yeah, no, I think it can go both ways. Like some guys, I feel like if you get a long deal, you kind of take a step back where, you know, I look at guys like who we skate with, Sid and Nate, uh, Brad, they've all been on long deals, but they're the most hungry guys. So, you know, for me getting that long contract, yeah, it's nice. Obviously, I don't have to worry about a deal for, for six years, but, you know, it's, I'm still hungry to get better. And, uh, you know, it's cool. Obviously, obviously set up nice financially with the long, long-term long deal. But, uh, yeah, it doesn't really change my mindset or anything. I just want to get better every day. I think that's the difference between you and just well, professional athletes in general that have long careers and not so much. It's, like, I'll admit, like – get an you know get an advertisement deal like i'll breathe I'm like thank god you know go to the mall maybe and yeah but like it's sure. just but like that amount of money like 
to still be hungry. It's, it's, there's got to be something else in you. you know? Yeah. I think just like, uh, just winning's everything, man. Like everything comes with winning. If you win, more guys get paid. Like it's just the way it is, right? So that's why the good teams can never stay together. Because once you win, go into free agency, everyone's getting the money they they are asking for because they won. So winning helps everyone out financially, and just just winning's the best in general. <laughs> I bet it is. Yeah, I bet it is. Yeah. Have you learned a lot about the business side of hockey over these years as being a professional hockey player? Yeah, I think so. I, mean, I think so for sure. Um, definitely learn learning more every year. I, I like I sit at the back of the plane. I don't really I don't play cards just because the boys play for an arm and a leg. But uh, <laughs> I play, I sit in the back with the older guys and uh, you learn a lot from them. Just you know, I bought a, I bought a two houses now, one in Ottawa, one here. Learning how to deal with that. Just just everyday things, you know. And as a as a young guy, you got to deal with. So just learning all the time. Do you have any tenants? I, I do, yeah. I got someone mowing, mowing the grass here. I got a big old lawn, so I didn't feel like buying a John Deere this summer, but next summer I think I'll get a ride on and uh, start doing it myself. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Two homes, wow. Where do you, But yeah. you're going to spend most of your summers here. Yeah, I'll always come back here. Yeah, my training, everything's back here. All my buddies still live here, so Halifax, Halifax is home, Halifax in the Valley, so buzz back and forth. It's such a great place to live. Yeah, I love it. Like, I, I love going back to the Valley. You know, I've been been away now for almost almost 10 years go back everything's the same you know we got a new starbucks in the the (laughs) superstar that's that's about it man is that from there the starbucks no no i grabbed that one just down the road but yeah i went went in the superstore a couple weeks ago and saw starbucks in there and asked the parents like yeah we just got that about a month ago and it was a big hit in town for about a week and then you know people got sick and tired of paying six bucks for a coffee and it's pretty slow now (laughs) Yeah. they go to starbucks yeah that's that's the big news in the valley you get a starbucks in the superstore but yeah starbucks and a new burrito spot so what's the burrito spot having arrows no I'm, I'm not sure the name it's a, it's a different spot but i haven't tried it out yet so we got two new things in the last 10 years in the valley we're we're getting somewhere <laughs> You don't need anything. You guys are great the way it is. No, I love it. You got Ken Wo, you got the the winery, you got Eagle Crest, you got some great restaurants, Acadia's there. Oh, yeah. Not much more you need in the Valley. You don't want too much. No, I don't. You got to keep it the way it is. Yeah, I like it old school, man, anyway, so no, it's it's great. I love it back home, but I love it here, too. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Um, You got an A on your jersey. Yeah. This year. Yeah. So, well, kind of a kind of a bad situation to get in my uh one of my teammates thomas shabbat usually wears it and he had a hand injury and went down for I think it was the last 15 or 20 games and my coach kind of came up to me in the morning skating he goes how would you like me to throw an a on on your jersey tonight i said yeah no problem sounds good to me man and away i went and wore it for the last 15 20 games but uh no it was, it was definitely cool obviously to to wear it i haven't worn one since since junior so obviously it was uh huge uh huge accomplishment and uh you know i i was i was super pumped and uh yeah no we'll go back on shabby's jersey uh, this year but no it's cool to wear it for sure yeah that's definitely that's a, that's a feather in your cap but that's a great thing there's a lot of leaders on that team and for you to be recognized that's that's nothing but good yeah no it's cool like i'm not the most vocal guy either so i'm just kind of no from no. those mic'd up videos i would have argued that yeah i mean i'm not a guy that'll speak up in between periods or anything like that i kind of leave that to the older guys or, or brady but you know i'm kind of always just mingling with everyone and try to get along with everyone so um yeah just try to be a good teammate and obviously got rewarded with it good with stuff. An a. Yeah. i like it yeah um correct me if i'm wrong did you work on the past two years on your release i noticed from this year compared to maybe two three years ago you you didn't not that you stumbled with the puck but this year it was on and off your stick in a heartbeat like your maybe your your hands and your stick would be out of position but your body wasn't and you were somehow able to get it close into you and get a quicker release did you work on that in the summers yeah, no, I'm, I'm always working on my shot. Like, oh, yeah. whether it's like a morning skate day of the game, I'll go out 10 minutes early and just fire a quick 100 pucks. You know, that takes, you know, five, 10 minutes to do. So I'm always working on it, staying on after, playing shooting games, like whatever it is. You know, we have a nice shooting room at our, at our rink too, a whole like fake ice facility to go shoot pucks. So, you know, if there's a game I miss the net a few times, I'm probably going in there after the game and, and ripping a few pills. But. Yeah, I'm always working on it, and uh, I think I was like top five in the league in post hit this year too. So, uh, is that a, is yeah. that a call? Is that a good or a bad thing? Oh, was, that's a I good mean, thing. Would have liked to see if you go bar in, but uh, twenty two. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's 
no, but this summer I'm just trying to hit the net, honestly. Um, big thing me and my coach talked about is just trying to make the goalie make the save. Like Ovechkin, he always hits the net, and, you know, if the goalie doesn't make the save and it's in, right? So a lot of guys try to, like, pick that corner where if you try to make the goalie make the save more, I think you'll you'll score more. What flex yeah. stick do you use? I'm back and forth, usually 87 or, or 90. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I'm great. It's different for me though. Like, uh, as a kid, I'd always grab a stiffer one and as it, I would use it, it would get more whippy. Right. But now I, you can grab as many as you want every day. So, well, you have the luxury of breaking them and just getting a new one. So if you want exactly. it whippier. Yeah. Like, I don't know. It's like golfers. I think they go through new wedges every week on tour. It's like, so us, like uh, we're, we're a new stick a game, new stick a day. Right. So it's always the same feeling when you when you pick up a new stick. When you had that snipe against Detroit, well, you were basically along the you were like along the red line, the goal line. Yeah. You put it, I think, off his helmet. Yeah. That was like kind of the goal I'm talking about, where yeah. you just got it off so quick at a weird, awkward angle, but somehow you just put it right there. That's when I, I was watching your highlights this morning to come up with a couple questions. I was like, man, that's the that's the release right there. Yeah. No, I I scored a goal similar on uh, Markstrom. Yeah a few years ago in Calgary and I just remember my goalie coach coming up to me after the game and he said Drake that's that's the biggest goalie in the league and if you can do that on him off the mask and then you can do it on any goalie so that'll always be there it's but it's you know it's a fine line you only got an inch or two to work with so I can't I don't hit it a lot but you know I've I've got it once a year so far the last two years I I don't (laughs) care you did it and you meant to do it It wasn't a mistake like that's it's it's interesting now how in today's NHL some of these shots like they're not mistakes anymore like the the between the leg top top right top left that's not a mistake that's just the remember they used to go oh that's showboat that's not showboating anymore that's just the goal it's just it's not even an effort for you guys no I know like it's I mean I'm still a young guy but the young guys that are just getting drafted and coming in the league like Zegris and these guys like the skill that they have are just off the charts and like even the next wave coming of young guys like I feel like everyone's kind of doing that stuff in their basement where you know me as a kid I wasn't really focused on through the legs or catching pucks or whatever like that so the new wave super skilled and uh, obviously some of the highlights are unbelievable now it's great for the game yeah like, sure. there, there's definitely an argument there people don't like it people love it but at the end of the day it's great for the game it's going to get more eyeballs and it's going to get you guys paid so 100 percent, yeah like I, my mom's a school teacher i go into the class usually when i get home from the season and everyone's talking about the michigan move all of her, <laughs> all of her students so i mean it just like goes through all the young kids right so you know it's growing the game at the same time and you know that's what, what, what it's all about what uh, what are some goals that you guys have this year, other than obviously going to to, to playoffs? But what are some things going into training camp that uh, that the team's looking to to set on? Yeah, I think just having a good start. Uh, you know, ever since I've been there for the last four or five years now, we've had you know not great starts. We were usually like four and six in the first ten games or whatever. Where I think if we get out of the gates running this year and you know get in the playoff spot within the first 20 25 games and just kind of play consistent hockey from there on out i think we'll be in a, a nice position come april and then uh you know like i said earlier once you get in playoffs you know anyone can win anyone in any given night in the nhl can win no matter if you're in first place or last place and you know it showed first round there with florida and boston you know you get a hot goalie or your team gets rolling it's it's dangerous it's like montreal a few years ago Carey price gets hot and boom cup final you know so just got to get in that, got to get on the train tracks and just keep trucking. Yeah. Edmonton guy over here, he's having a tough go. <laughs> At least they make it and then he just can't. Next year. Yeah. Next year. Yeah. I had them penciled in, man. I was telling my buddies, I was like, Edmonton's going to be tough to beat. Oh, yeah. But, uh, are you a fan? Like, are you a fan of the NHL? Like, even though you're in it? Oh, yeah. I mean, when I'm playing Xbox, playing <laughs> Call of Duty, my buddies, they're all talking about hockey. So I, I got to keep up to date with it. And, you know, it's a, it's a Monday night in Ottawa. There's not much going on. I'm throwing on the TV and, and watching hockey, you know. So I'm just like everyone else. Yeah. <laughs> you just get to play in it. You just get the, a better seat in the house. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Except I'm the guy on the ice yeah, next exactly. night. But, uh, no, it's cool. I, I just love hockey in general, and it's the only thing I have interest in really in life. Yeah, And golf. Golf too, yeah. I still tell yeah. that story about you said you were you know, almost going to quit. Yeah, no, That's I was. That's like my number two story in the bag. You guys hear Drake yeah. almost quit? Yeah, no, I did for sure. But just had a passion for it, man. Even if I wasn't playing in the NHL right now, I'd probably be playing in every men's league in the city, you know, four nights a week or something. I just love playing. Are you playing at the one in Penn Hills on the weekend? Uh, no, no, I'm not. No, 
the uh, high more is okay yeah high more is going yeah. in it is he yeah, yeah. right on doodle the matt doodle he's our he works with us as well and he in the off season with us works uh the groundskeeper at Penn Hill, so he like makes the whole placements. He mows, oh, yeah. and we just got a bunch of rain. And he was sending me snaps this morning, and the fairways are drenched. Oh yeah, and the it starts. I think it starts tomorrow, maybe yeah. Friday. That makes sense. So yeah. they're in trouble. Oh wow, it's wet. Yeah, I feel like it's been wet for the last couple of weeks. It's tough. It's been tough to get out for some golf, but it'll be interesting. Yeah, have we'll to, see. Have to carry the ball. Be be plugging every shot for sure. I know that's good though, because then oh, you're yeah. like, "Oh no, it hit the fairway. I'm just gonna drop here. It don't yeah. count as a stroke." Yeah, clean it off, <laughs> clean but, it off. Yeah, lift clean in place. But you know, it'll be interesting to see. I'm always lo- watching uh, the am and stuff, so it'll oh, be cool. Yeah, there's parts of me that wish I never picked it up because it's addicting. It's, it takes away from this, and yeah, no, I love it though. Time. Oh, it's the best. I mean, come Friday, you work all week, go out in the course, and have a few pops with the boys. You can't really beat it. No, no. What's the rule of thumb with playing during the year? Like if you guys go to California and Pebble Beach is twenty minutes away, oh yeah. Like if you play San Jose, like is that is that okay with the coach or? Yeah, our coach and GM both love golf. So uh, like two days before the season, we went to Montreal Blanc as a team, and they set up a big golf game for us. So they're all for it. Like I played, I think I played in Vegas, uh, Florida, um, and Seattle this year. So oh, played yeah. three three rounds during the during the season. Carolina right. too. So. Yeah. Are you allowed to bring your clubs or do you just rent them while you're there? No, we usually just rent them. I was going to say. Yeah, that. it's kind of a bit of a hassle carrying them on. But maybe if we were playing a, a really nice course, you'd try to bring your clubs on. But yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a team plane. You can pretty much do whatever you want. If I'm sure you could bring them if you wanted to. Putt on the plane? Yeah, oh yeah. Bring just the putter, Scotty bring, Cameron? <laughs> bring them right up the steps on the plane. Yeah, do whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever got to play Pebble? No, I never have. No. 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 The coolest experience golf wise, I played the the Grove this year, Michael oh. Jordan's course. Yeah, that was that was unbelievable. Wow. Yeah, yeah, he was there too. So no, it was pretty pretty cool experience. Did you get to meet him? Yeah, I met. I, I mean, just he asked us how the round was afterwards, and I was playing with a guy who who knew him, and uh, yeah, kind of got to talk to him for a quick minute there, and. He was playing with Luke Bryan too, so we got to meet him. Meet him so, yeah. oh, big dogs! Yeah. That's incredible. Ken Ken Griffey Jr. was at was at the pro shop too, and I was like picking out a hat. And I'm not a big baseball guy, so I had no idea, right? And my my centerman Pinto calls me over. He's like, "You know who you're standing beside over there, right?" I'm like, "No, I have no idea." He's like, "Dude, that's one of the biggest baseball legends of all time." And I just had no idea. <laughs> Canadian boy from the valley, go figure, you know. <laughs> Yeah, maybe it was Wayne Gretzky, but no. <laughs> Ken Griffey right next to you in the pro shop. Yeah, it was cool, man. Wow. Yeah, it was a great day. So that's the that's the best part. No, don't get me wrong. I, there's plenty of other good parts about playing pro hockey, but moments yeah. like that, just yeah, yeah casually no. next to these weapons. It's crazy where the game will take you and the people you meet through it. I've I've got to do unbelievable things just just through hockey and meet some unbelievable people. So it's it's pretty amazing. Yeah. What'd you drop at the Grove? Did you buy some uh, some gitch? Yeah, no. Couple I, polos. Yeah, I bought the old man head cover. Got myself uh, two hats and a pair of shoes. So put a nice put a nice dent in the pro shop for sure. Nice. Yeah. When the season uh, schedule comes out, do you look at the schedule and kind of not plan fun, but just look at it and go, oh, we're in Arizona during the waste management. Where do you look at the schedule? Oh yeah, yeah for sure. I mean, we were actually talking about it last week, going over the schedule and. We're going to Sweden this year for a week, too. What? It, so, for regular season? Yeah, we're playing two games. We're playing uh, Detroit and Minnesota over there. So we're there for a week and only play twice. So probably try to squeeze in the game of golf, too. Wow. Yeah, early November. But I don't know how cold it is over there then, but hopefully not too bad. Sweden? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I have no idea. But, yeah, no, we look at the schedule for Anaheim, L.A., any of those warm cities. We're off for a day. We'll set up a golf game, no problem. Yeah, you got to have fun with it. Oh, 100%. Yeah, it's better than just stick, sticking in the room all day and having a nap. Might as well go out and swing them. 100%. Yeah. Do you, do you still look at hockey as a job, or do you still look at it from a, a kid mentality of having fun? I mean, obviously, there's there's the business side, and, you know, you gotta got to be well-behaved, you know, all the time. But, you know, at the same time, it's you get into that dressing room with 20 of your buddies, and you're just shooting the shit all day, and it's a blast, man. I was telling someone last week, like, our team's so young, I feel like I've been playing junior for 10 years. Like, it's just, everyone always talks about junior, how it's the best time of their life. And 
mine just continued. I played two years of junior, and then it's felt like junior since my first year junior. So, oh, yeah? Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, we're just – I mean, on our first, I would say, on our forward side, I think we have maybe two guys over 30. We have. Is short. that a young team? Yeah, I mean, we have – I mean, my I'm probably the oldest guy out of, out of the core guys who've been there, and I'm only 25. Brady's younger, Norris is younger, Timmy's younger, Pinto's younger. Like we get a ton of young guys. Yeah. Wow, the, yeah. NA, the NHL is a young league, man. It's yeah, for you sure. wouldn't know better than anyone. Yeah, no, it's just getting faster too, man. It's it's going to be interesting to see where the game is in 15 years, 20 years from now, for sure. Yeah, yeah, it's already come so far in the past five years. Oh, I know. Yeah, it's. Yeah, I feel like it changes almost every year. So no, it's cool. Yeah, to be able to go in and play against the best players in the world and see the change firsthand yeah. must be kind of eye opening. That you're kind of part of revolution in the game. It's nice. Yeah, no, it's cool. I remember when I was like 18, skating with Sid. I thought the NHL felt like a million miles away, and then two years later, I'm I'm playing, and it's uh, it's pretty cool, man. Yeah. Yeah, sure. do you do you attribute your growth from 18 to now being in the NHL full time to to practice, to muscle, to 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 cardio, to skill, to everything combined? Like I, everyone obviously says, you got to work to get to the NHL. But what do you think like that number one or two attribute is to get you from that 18 year old to 62 points in the NHL? Yeah, I honestly give a lot of credit to my summer skate here, like. I always tell people on my team, I'm like, boys, you wouldn't believe like how good and how hard we go in the summer. And I remember going from my first first skate at 18 years old, and uh, I just got so much confidence after skating with these guys, and ended up making World Juniors that year. And obviously, my my coming out party was kind of World Juniors, but I I always look back to the summer skates and. Every summer, every summer since I was 18, I feel like I'm getting better, and I think it's just because of the summer skates, yeah. There's some great stories coming from those skates. Oh, man, yeah, it's it's awesome. Like, yesterday we were just grinding three-on-three. Three, like, guys are finishing their checks. We're just going hard out there, so it's fun, man. It's war, I heard. Yeah, exactly. Heard, like, you can't even take a knee. <laughs> no, like, Zach, Zach Sill's out there finishing checks. you got to keep your head up. But, no, Siller's a beauty, man. He's... I, I've known Siller for a while now and got to train with him, and he, he's just the best. He's been on the podcast. Yeah. And it was one of those ones where you didn't really have to say much. You just kind of let him tell stories, and he, he's really good at telling stories. He he takes you to the place where things happen. He's good. Oh, for sure. Yeah, he probably had a few key slights going during the podcast, did he? That was a demand. So yeah. I, I, <laughs> it was the first, so I said, will you come on? He goes, I will, but make sure the fridge is full of Keith lights. Oh, yeah. And I was like, yeah, no problem <laughs> should've, done. Should have let him drink six before the podcast. <laughs> I had a few more stories for you, but. Well, it was no, one of those good. ones where it was over. Yeah. And then he's, you know, he's there for another hour and we're still drinking. It's like, yeah, man, yeah. why aren't the mics on right now? Yeah, but it's just one of those episodes. But yeah. well, what a great guy. He's the best man yeah I, I love that guy great family too his brother i'm pretty sure plays uh softball with dudes yeah or maybe you no know, maybe it's siller that plays softball yeah i, I don't think, know the whole I think family. they both play yeah i think his brother was a goalie in, in junior a or junior b and used to fight too oh yeah, yeah he was I like one it. of the toughest guys on the team and he was the goalie <laughs> <laughs> yeah. there's some incredible stories as well when siller was playing for the Truro bearcats oh yeah so i think he only played one year but if you talk to guys that played in that era and talk about like it, his work ethic and his forechecking and his like screaming as he's forechecking just some incredible stories yeah, yeah. coming from that era i guess <laughs> out of junior a and him yeah the mic'd up one against uh toronto is the probably the best mic'd up i've ever watched in my life i've probably watched it a hundred times it's awesome when he's going at enough yeah. you guys have obviously seen yeah. that video it's, it's tough to best. be yeah oh yeah big time it's just you know exactly where he's from by watching it you're like that guy's from the east coast of canada somewhere if you're listening to him and you just yeah, no, it's cool. Like, and even guys like Siller, everyone always talks about like, you know, Sid, Nate, and Brad, obviously. But there's so many other guys who play games too that you can look up to. And you know, Siller's a guy who come doesn't really come from much over in in Brookfield, and just a guy who grinded, played junior A. And I remember looking up at Siller and looking at his hockey DB and seeing he played junior A. And I play, I was playing junior A that year, and I'm like, you never know, right? So it's it's cool. There's a lot of good stories out there, and. You know, he's another guy that just scratched and clawed and ended up making a career for himself. Yeah, still yeah. playing over in Europe. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. ways to go about this hockey thing, man. Oh, man, you can play for a while if you if you want to, for sure. Cam Lee over in Russia right now. Like, yeah. there's, ways to, there's ways to carve out a career and have a great time. Oh, big time, yeah. You're, I mean, I was lucky. I grew up in Europe for eight years because my dad was playing there, and 
unbelievable experience and definitely something I want to do uh, further down the line for sure. Oh yeah, like when you're not playing. Yeah, just even maybe go play when I'm you know when oh, I'm too sorry. Okay. when I'm too slow for the for the NHL <laughs> one day. Um, I'd love to go over just for a year or two and just uh, you know I I used to speak it fluent too German so yeah. So no maybe, maybe me and Timmy in the future will go play over in Germany together. Oh, know. yeah, Timmy's <laughs> German. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. yeah, and that's another great thing about what you do is the connections you make around the world. you got a buddy in Germany now for the rest of your life. Yeah. You know, you got a couch to sleep on the rest of your life in Germany. You're set. 100%. Yeah, he's always telling me to come over to Europe. And uh, I'm like, buddy, if the tickets didn't cost an arm and a leg and I didn't train in the summer, I'd be over there with you, buddy. But uh, it's, a, it's a bit of a jaunt for sure. Is Brady going to get to Halifax? I don't know. He's been talking about it, trying to get him down. Um, so Andy O'Brien, he works for Florida, and uh, obviously his brother's there, so they have that connection, and they talked about maybe coming down. But you know, he wants to come down and get down to that lower deck. I know that for sure. <laughs> well, I, <don't, laughs> I guess if you're not from here, you hear the yeah. story, that's the place, the lower yeah, deck. The live tunes and, and the keys. I think he, he's itching for it. I was in there the other day for the first time in years. And you walk in, and the, it was one of these hot days. The humidity, you step in there, and you lost 10 pounds of water weight when you oh, step yeah. in. You're just sweating. <laughs> yeah, you're just 100%. breathing. Everyone's B.O. in. You're just yeah. there like, oh, man. <laughs> it's just one of those days. But, yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> you definitely get some stories in there. Oh, big time. Yeah. Especially in the summer. Yeah. yeah I got to get back. back. Um, the plans from now. When do you go back? I think camps around the 20th of September. So we usually do our fantasy football draft. That's like, we plan that on the calendar. We were t- it's usually around September 7th. We'll rent out a restaurant and all the boys will get in there and we'll do a big live draft. So it's a, it's a good time and you got to be in town for it. So. <laughs> you can't, so, you can't do it via yeah. zoom. Whenever I get the date for that, I'll, I'll be up there probably within the first week of September sometime in there. Man, that's late. No, yeah. maybe not. That's normal. Yeah. I mean, I feel like when we were younger, it started, the league started in September. Yeah, I think our first game's maybe the 12th of October, I think. So, yeah, there's, I think we have eight preseason games, which is, which is a lot. Yeah. (laughs) Is training camp a grind for, like, even like you're on the team, you're secured? Like, is it even, like, do they, like, you're not going to play every preseason game? Or do you want to play every preseason game? Yeah, I think I played, uh, I think we had eight last year. I I think I played five five out of eight. Yeah, so you play pretty bu- pretty much all of them. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Kind of pick and choose. Like, half the vets will go, so I think we're playing Toronto at home, and then there's a game at the same time in Toronto. So half the team will go to Toronto, half the team will stay home. Oh, because they haven't made cuts yet, so there's just a bunch. Do they, like, exactly. an AHL roster? Yeah. Or they mix and match? I think you have to have seven veterans or returning players playing. So, yeah, you, a lot of vets at the start of camp will, will sit out for sure, and then as it goes along, you kind of play every game. Yeah, is there communication between you and the coaches? Like, ah, coach, I don't, I don't want to go today. I'm just, my, you know, my hamstrings a little. Like, you guys are all adults. You don't have to say I don't want to play because I don't want to play. But yeah, if you don't want to play, you... for sure. Like, for example, we're playing uh, Sydney and Halifax preseason games. They're back to back nights. Probably ninety nine percent of the guys won't play back to backs, but I'll play in it for sure just because I. Yeah. have to and i want to you know so the roster comes out your name's yeah. not there you scratch the guy's name out you put your own name yeah like, no, so, i'm playing i'm so playing. that could be a conversation like hey dj i'm playing i want to play these two maybe the next one i don't play or something like that you know but you never know with injuries and stuff like that too he usually puts lines together so like say my line will play this game and then brady's line will play the next game or whatever yeah yeah something like that That'll be a cool picture to have in the basement one day, you and Sid taking the opening face off. That'll yeah, be cool. It's gonna be awesome. Get man. that framed one I'm, day. I'm pumped too. And Pitt Pitt was my favorite team growing up and obviously Sid was my favorite player, so it's gonna be a pretty crazy day. I'm excited. Yeah. I don't know how you're gonna be able to sleep the night before. I don't no, know how know. I'm gonna be able to sleep. Yeah. That's gonna be I'll, I'll be waiting at the rink. I know. The boys my buddies probably be knocking on my door trying to get me to go out, but yeah. <laughs> oh no, yeah, I, that's true. Yeah. Twenty five tickets? Yeah, I got twenty five twenty five tickets and uh hopefully a box too, so yeah. Twenty five won't even be enough, but that's that's all the wallets taken. <laughs> do you you already got the tickets? I I put a word out there, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Because they don't come but, out on sale to the eight 18th i think okay yeah so no, i get i got the order in i know a guy <laughs> oh, <fucker. laughs> knows a guy yeah himself i wonder how many sid got 
Oh, geez, yeah. He probably, probably got a section. Probably had first dibs on any of the tickets, I would say. Yeah, he's probably got a ton. I mean, this could be his last game in Halifax. I, don't, I have no idea. So, be a lot of a lot of Pittsburgh jerseys out there for sure. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be an event. Yeah, it's going to be. I think the whole town will be buzzing. So, it's going to be awesome. I didn't know they were playing in Sydney, too, though. Yeah, we're, that, we're, we're playing day before. Not Pittsburgh. We're playing, I think, Florida day before in, in Sydney. Oh, Center that'll be 200, good. So the Brady brother, the Kachuk brothers, getting together. Yeah, that'll no, be nice. Exactly. So in Sydney, yeah. <laughs> that could be that could be a great time. Yeah, <laughs> no, I'm excited just to show the boys like just around the Maritimes, man. It's it's gonna be awesome. Like last year, we were playing in Gander, Newfoundland, and uh, Gander's a pretty small town, and we're kind of driving to the hotel, and we're staying in like a motel where they have the doors like on the main level. You know what I mean? Like you park right in front of your oh, hotel yeah, door. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And the guys are like Drake, like why is there doors like in the front of the hotel? I'm like, boys, this is this is normal down here. Like the motels have their own doors. You just park right in front of it. They've never seen it. I just I'm just shaking my head, you know. That's but, not normal in other parts of the world. I thought that was no, just a normal thing. You know, you wouldn't see that in New York City or anything like that. So, no, we got a lot of Americans from from big cities, so they don't they don't really see the small town side of things. I love that. Yeah. You, you just, these big wig guys come in and see yeah. that. That must be the funniest thing. Oh, yeah. And just like <laughs> for our pregame meal, we had a family bring in like a bunch of home cooked food and it was unreal. And the boys just didn't really know what was going on, really. Because they're used to staying at like whatever Ritz Carlton and stuff. And you got everything. But, you know, I, I love the home cooked meal and, uh, in the motel it was right up my alley you guys will be staying at the holiday inn express when you come here yeah no. <laughs> hopefully somewhere close i don't know no there's a couple new hotels yeah. right downtown you guys will be all right yeah maybe the satin or the mirror or something the something mirror like yeah that. yeah it's a nice little spot down there now it's yeah. all new down there a bunch of restaurants and I always say this to the guys that come on that live away. When you guys come home, you must appreciate the growth of the city because, like, we see it every day, but you're gone. So when you come back, you must see it and go, whoa, things are yeah, changing. It's crazy. Like, even for training in the morning, I never had to worry about traffic a few years ago. And then uh, now it's like I'm leaving an hour early, and I'm only coming in from 20 minutes away. So it's it's wild. Yeah, the city's just growing, I feel like. Booming. Yeah. I hope one day, I hope we're alive for there to be an NHL team here. Oh, like, I hope great. we're both just, like, 80, yeah, you know, and then just, like, there's a team. Oh, it'd be great. Wouldn't yeah. it? Oh, it'd be unreal, yeah. Yeah, I think it'd be, get Sid and all those guys in the last year of their career to come play for it. It'd be... No, to, <laughs> to buy it. Though, they'll, yeah. No, no, they won't be... That, uh, imagine, yeah. think about that, like, 40 years from now, 50, yeah. Sid, Nate, you, a couple other guys, you, like, own the team. Yeah, that'd be amazing, for sure. Halifax Citadels. Yeah. No, it's like I played with a guy this year. He's part owner of uh, Derek Broussardi. He owns part of the team in Gatineau. Mm -hmm. And we would just go over and watch junior games whenever. And I thought it was the coolest thing ever, you know, him being part owner, like just had a little bit of say in the team. Like I would love to do something like that when I'm done. So we'll see. It'd be great. New yeah. owners for the Mooseheads this year. Yeah. Yeah, new owners yeah. there. Yeah. So, yeah, ownership would be cool. No, big time. We were looking at the price of, uh, what was it? I think it was a junior A team, and we, we found out how much it was. I'm like, oh, okay, so we, we might be able to afford that. Like yeah. We're, like, flirting with <laughs> buying a team, calling them, like, the Halifax high buttons, <laughs> making yeah. dra making trades. Oh, yeah. If we buy them, we'll get you to come drop an open puck. Yeah, and no, I would love to. I'd be there for yeah. sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That'd be great. Uh -huh. It's crazy Halifax doesn't have a team. You'd think they would, but. Just, yeah. yeah. They, there's no rink. That's right, yeah. Yeah, they're due, due for a new barn, for sure. How was it playing in Arizona? It was different, yeah. No, I was listening to the podcast when Liam was talking about it. Like He was saying like it's probably the best place to watch a game, and I would agree. It'd be like, I'm trying to compare it to a rink, like maybe like the Churro. Yeah, like even smaller than that. Like probably the new Churro rink. I don't know if you guys have been in that yeah, one. Yeah, I've been it there. Would, it would be similar to that. So I think it holds like 4,400, the rink, but. That's cool. Like you're walking to the rink and you're just like walking on a college campus. Like it's different for sure. But yeah, it was fun. Yeah. Yeah. I think it would be even as a player, no bad day in the NHL. Who cares if you're playing in front of 5,000? <laughs> no, you know? exactly. Like that, it's fun. Yeah. I'm a guy too where once the puck drops, I'm not really worried about what's going on in the stands or how many people are there, you know? So, you don't even notice. No. it's You definitely notice it in warm up and stuff, but it's all good, man. It is what it is. 100%. Yeah. yeah. No, we're going to a bachelor party there in April, so we're looking to get a game in. Also, like, ASU baseball is playing. Oh, yeah. They got a new stadium out there. Yeah. We're basically just going to be, like, in Scottsdale, Tempe, and just 
kind of cruise around for the week. Golf, of course. Oh yeah, there there are facilities there. Like I, I think I'm sending my kids there for sure. Like oh it's yeah, awesome there, man. Yeah, the football stadium's like built into the side of like a mountain. It's it's awesome. You'll have to check it out for sure. Yeah, the, the, we we checked everyone's schedule. There's no football, no basketball, okay. but there's hockey and there's baseball. Okay, yeah. So that's two, and then we'll golf. So that's three sports that we'll be able oh, to get yeah. into. It'll be fun. Yeah, there's a ton of golf there and. It'll be hot too, so you'll you'll enjoy that for sure. Hot in April. Oh, it'll be cooking there. Yeah, we went in uh, January and it was, geez, we were warming up outside. It was like almost thirty degrees. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was nice. Yeah. How much time are we at? Fifty-five. Fifty-five. Oh my bad, man. I didn't oh, hold good, you this man. long. You're good, man. I don't uh, got much going on. What are you doing today? Do you already uh, train? Yeah, train this morning, and uh, yeah, nothing too crazy. In the rain? Oh, no, you're in the form. In the inside, yeah, this morning, yeah. You get on the ice? Yeah, usually skating two or three times a week. I was on Monday, Tuesday, so. Oh, like this morning, though? You didn't get uh, No, not this morning, no. I usually skate around 10, 10.30-ish in, in the morning, uh, but, you know, today was a day off. Wednesday is usually men's night at, a, at my course, but oh, right. the Nova Scotia Provincials are there this week, so. There's a bunch going on yeah. with Golf Nova Scotia this week. Yeah, no, for sure. And the AM this weekend, so. Yeah. Yeah, no, the men's night got canceled, so got the afternoon off. Gonna enjoy it. Good stuff. Take the dog for a spin, maybe. You got a dog? Yeah. What kind? Got two. I got a Doberman and a French Bulldog. You got the, the names. Uh, Bobby is the French Bulldog, and Ivy's the Doberman. Bobby and Ivy. I like it. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. My nickname is Bobby, uh, so I was just like, Your nickname is uh, Bobby? Yeah, it's like, it's I don't know if it's how well known it is, but like my teammates for sure, that's all they call me. I thought so, it was Drizzy. Yeah, that too. I mean, I got a couple for sure, which which what? isn't a bad thing, but. Oh, Bobby Batherson. Is that? No, just like, it's a long story, man. Like, I don't know, it goes all the way back to Junior A and this guy used to play for the Bruins. His name was Bobby Schmatz. He was a, he was a legend. Yeah. And uh, I just love the name Schmatzy and Bobby. <laughs> and I was like, all my buddies started calling me it. I don't know. Self-proclaimed. Self-proclaimed name, yeah, Bobby. Well, it's yeah. Bobby. That's a great nickname. It's the worst because whenever a guy gets treated, they're like, why the hell we call you Bobby? And I got to tell the story over. I tell the story about 15 times a year. And it's the dumbest <laughs> Sorry, story I asked. No, that. no, I don't care. But. So when you're up, yeah. what did they say? Bobby's line, Bobby, you're up? Or did they say Drizzy's up? No. Or did they say so, Batherson's up? They call the centerman. So. Yeah, but, but. But, yeah, no, I know what you're saying. Like, my coach would just call me Drake. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Drake's but, up. Drake's up, yeah. And but in my, in the minors, like my coach was calling me, my nickname for Bobby? sure. Yeah, Bobby or Schmatz. Yeah, I like Bobby better. No offense, Drake's a good yeah. name, but I like Bobby. Oh yeah, Bobby, you're up. Let's go. Like if my buddy, if my buddies were here right now, it'd be Bobby Everson. Bobby. Yeah, Bobby or Bobo, either or. That'd throw me off for a bit. But yeah, whatever. It is what it is. <laughs> no, Drake's good. Drake and Jersey work, man. I like it. Yeah. Um, before you go, advice to. That kid in you play junior A, right? Yeah. For the valley. Yeah. So the kid in junior A, maybe just had his first year there. He's seventeen. He's looking to make that jump to the queue and make um make a name for himself. What's your advice to that kid this summer in order to be prepared for next year as an eighteen year old in the queue? Yeah, I think man, there's there's so much out there that's that's kind of out of your out of your hands you, you can only really control what what you can control and uh you know for me it's you know trying to get better every day um come in be a good teammate have a positive attitude no matter teams winning or losing and i just kind of had that mindset my whole career and i've been cut from from many teams growing up and like i said earlier i'd be playing hockey even if i wasn't playing in the nhl like i remember in grade 12 I was getting ready to go take a trade at SMU and probably going to play hockey at SMU. So, like, I, I easily could have been playing in my, you know, fourth, fifth year right now at SMU. That was just how it is. And then, yeah, I don't know. My passion just kind of just kept pushing me along. And I've always been good at adjusting to, to new levels, whether it was making the jump from midget to junior A or junior A to the Q. It only really took me about 10 games to figure it out and get my feet under me. And, you know, away I go. But just for advice, I think just – just have passion and, you know, have fun. And I think, uh, yeah, just work hard and don't really let the outside noise bother. There's so much, you know, out there nowadays. You just kind of got to have fun and be yourself and, you know, just uh, go, with the, go, with, go with the waves and go with the flow.
All right. I like it, Bobby. You're the man. Yeah, no worries. Thank you very much for coming on. I appreciate your time. I know you're a busy guy in the summer, so to have you here, it's a treat. Yeah, fan of the show too, so no, I appreciate you guys having me on. I love it. Yeah. Let me know if Ottawa needs uh, live streaming. If TSN doesn't cut the bill, let us know. We'll be there. We'll live stream for you guys. I'll get the boys out. (laughs) (laughs) All right, everyone listening, thank you very much uh, for tuning in. I appreciate all of you. I'll say it once again. I always say it. If you don't listen, this podcast goes nowhere. So thank you very much. We are out. Peace. Boom. That was great.